everyone. Welcome to episode 22 of All About African Violets. All About African Violets is musically sponsored by Ted Yoder. You can hear and purchase his gorgeous music at his website, tedyoder.com. It's also available for my tunes. Well, hi everybody. Welcome to my sunroom. Come on in and sit down and, you know, I can see in the monitor the red star. It's right above my head and I keep thinking that a piece of my hair is like really red and <laughs> sticking really far up. Sorry, I should have adjusted my chair. But, uh, but welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I've had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We're gonna talk about a couple of things today. We're gonna to talk about pH because you guys have asked me, uh, more than one person has asked me about it. And we're also gonna talk about consistency of care. And these are two things that um, I think are important and can really help with your violets. So we're gonna jump right into tips and treasures. And oh, before though, uh, I do that. I just want to show you, this is the Mason's twine that I use. This is the most recent uh, spool of it that I got. It's pretty large. This is a 29 year supply, you guys. I mean, this will last. The last ones I had, I mean, they lasted forever before I ran out. And it's nylon, it's 100% nylon. And this is the, the, the finest grade or size or, uh, I don't know, diameter, width of the, of, the, of the twine itself. This is the number 18 grade, and that's what I use the most. There is one, there are, it comes in thicker grades as well, but this seems to work really well for me for everything. I have occasionally used the next grade up from this for standards, but quite frankly, this works just as well. And unless you have bazillions of plants, this truly is a, a really big supply. You'll have it forever. So I just wanted to, to tell you that. Um, also, uh, oh no, that was it. So let's, let's, let's go right into tips and treasures. So let's talk a little bit about pH first and then we'll talk about consistency of care. Um, pH is one of those things that you don't really have to think that much about, believe it or not. I, um, I shoot for, I mean, violets like it between about 6.2 to 6.9. Um, I mark pages in, in Pauline's book about pH, and there are multiple references in Joyce and Kent's book about pH. Both of these have great info, so if they're not on your shelves yet, um, pick them up. It's Christmas time, or put them on your Christmas list, uh, and hopefully you'll um, you'll get one. These are, they're both really good investments. You've heard me say this so many times, but I really can't emphasize it enough, I, those are the those are two in the top three. The other is the judge's handbook, and which also has great information about pH. I'm sorry, you guys, I think my nose is running. I should have got a Kleenex, I apologize. I was, co was cold on the way home, I guess. Sorry, momentary technical difficulty. I'm back now. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna tell you that I did write to Joyce and ask her because, as always, when I don't have a technical answer for something because She's the scientist and I'm not. I always ask her, and so I said, have you got any words of wisdom about pH? And she says, a few words of wisdom about pH. If a grower repots into fresh potting mix at least once a year, there usually won't be many worries about pH. If the local water source is quite acidic, below six, it might be helpful to use a product to raise the pH when things really go mystifyingly bad and nothing seems to be fixing the problem. Then one of the things that should be checked is pH since it can present a wide range of symptoms. The reason pH problems are so varied is because the pH determines what nutrients are available to the plant. So if nitrogen isn't available, the violet looks chlorotic or yellow. If the pH fa favors the absorption of copper, the center of the plant may dwarf. And she, then she says, but before I would test anything, I would just repot to see if that fixes the problem. So then I said to her, well, 
my tap water is very high. The pH is very high. Um, it goes off the chart, which this is the little chart that came with my little pH test kit. And it, it goes way off this end, off the blue side. And I said, well, mine is really high. And I said, so I run it through a Brita pitcher. And when necessary, I use pH down. This is an aquarium product called pH down. They also make one called pH up. <laughs> they do. <laughs> anyway, I said I use pH down to bring it down into the range that is best for African violets, which is, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, they like it best between about 6.2 and 6.9. I usually shoot for right around 6.5. I figure if I'm in the middle there, I should be doing pretty well. And uh, she said, then she answered me and she says, high pH is not as big an issue since the peat moss that's in our potting mix uh, becomes progressively more acid as time goes on. The alkaline water balances the acidity of the peat. And then she says, nonetheless, it is a very complicated topic and not really one that your audience needs to get stressed about, which I love. I thought that was great. So if you are repotting regularly, then really you shouldn't be having too much, too much trouble with pH. I do check mine uh, because I have, I, I use tap water and I run it through a pitcher and, and when you put fertilizer in the water, that can adjust the pH a little bit as well. Um, I just try to keep it in that range and the tools that I use for that, as I mentioned, I use pH down. It's only a few drops in, in a gallon of water and I have the, you know, I mix my water up by the gallon. I don't have millions of plants. And then this is also um, the pH test kit for water. Um, this brand is Beckett. This is also really old. This is a 29 year supply of pH test. It came with a little tube. You put the water in the tube up to the line. I don't know if you can see the line there. And then you put three drops of this in the water and then shake it up. And then the color, the water will change color. And then you use, you use, I didn't want to flip it over upside down. You use the scale, and then I usually, you know, will hold this up and match the color, and that will tell me if I need to maybe put a couple of drops of pH down in the water. For me, it's never the other way around. It's always that my water is high in pH, and I need to drop it down a little more. So, so that is really what you need to know, I think, about pH. But it really ties into something else I wanted to talk to you about today, which is um, something that Winston Goretzky, who is the, the photographer uh, for the African Violet Magazine, talks about as consistency of care. And the treasure that I have for you today is an interview with Winston that he sat down with me when I was in Tulsa uh, earlier this year at the Missouri Valley Show and talked about violets and talked a little bit, a bit about his photography. And one of the things he talks about as well is consistency of care. And if you, if you are anywhere in the Chicagoland area and you've ever had plants in a show that I have judged and you ever saw a comment on a plant that said, or you've ever been to a show where I've judged and seen comments and um, where, I, where it might have said more consistent care would make this, you know, would, would help for this plant. And th the reason that consistent care, I think, is so important is that if you let a plant dry out all the way, it suffers a little. It puts it into some a, a stress. If it gets too wet, if you let it sit, again, stress. Um, if it gets too cold or too hot. So once you're con you've got your con growing conditions set the, the way you feel are optimum for you and the plants you're growing, then to get on a good schedule of watering, I think is very critical. And as you, can, as you will see, um, when we take a look at what's on the stands, everything is on reservoirs um, uh, for me to be able to go out of town. And this will ensure that everybody is getting some consistent water while I'm away. Um, when you have, when, when you're not consistent with your care, 
is when you begin to see culture breaks, that's where you'll have an off row of leaves or you'll see very clearly that things look very different, you know, between one row and the next row. And in fact, I, I, um, I've already filmed, I just sat down, but I already filmed the pieces of uh, the look at, uh, at what's on the stands for this week. And when you look at um, the very first plant that you'll see is Blueberry Sprite, one of the ones I took to Tulsa. And I think you can see very clearly the outside ring of leaves that are marred and you know, those were the ones that were that came. It came home with me from National. I, I, I repotted it. I, I forced it to grow pretty quickly and forced it into bloom to take it to Tulsa. But now, and I really wasn't sure I was going to keep it. But now that it's been home and it's resting and it's just growing, I, I disbudded it earlier uh, this week. And the center leaves that are growing, boy, everything looks really good. And I. It's just very clear it's had consistent care now that it's been with me for this period of time since early this year. So that's, again, something that it just comes with time. And it also comes with limiting your collection. I haven't said that lately, have I? When you have too many things to take care of, being able to provide consistent care becomes difficult and challenging. So uh, just another reason to limit your collection. Well, I want to just tell you a little bit about Winston before we run to that, that piece of tape, video, recording. Tammy, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, Winston Goretzky is the second vice president of the AVSA. He's from Calgary, Alberta, in Canada, and he and his wife, Laurel, and you may recognize her name, Laurel Goretzky writes the Small Talk column in the magazine, and uh, they grow a substantial number of plants, as you'll hear. And he is a grower, he's also a designer, and as well, as you already know, takes the so many of the, almost all, I would say, of the fabulous photos that you see of plants in the African Violet magazine. So, take a look. I hope you enjoy. Hi you guys, I'm here with Winston Goretzky. He's here all the way from Canada and he graciously agreed to sit down with me and take a, to have a little chat. So hang on for just one moment and that's what we're going to do. Okay, here we go. So Winston, mm -hmm. thank you so much for sitting down oh, you're welcome. with me. This is great. And I and um, you guys, Winston is really well known in Canada for a lot of different stuff. And he's a great, great photographer. A lot of the photos, almost all, almost all of the photos I think that you see in the African Violet magazine are photos that he has taken. He shoots film all the time at every show and all of those beautiful things that you enjoy came from his art, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, how did you become interested in African violets? Well, um, I started growing African violets um, mostly because of my grandmother. I was about okay. six years old okay. and she lived out on the farm and uh, she would send me home at the end of the season with a box of African violets. No kidding. And she would say, your job is to keep these alive until next spring because there's no heat in the house and if I leave them out on the farm, they'll all die. So that was my challenge for the year. I would have to take these plants home and keep them alive through the winter and start new slips so that I could keep some and bring some back to okay. her the next year. So I did this back and forth for several years. And well, uh, how old were you? Well, I started around when I was six, and okay. when I was around 12 years old, I got a job at a, at a greenhouse, and they grew African violets. So oh, perfect. I was excited because I could take new slips, and I could start new plants. And you that could take new stuff to her. To her, yeah, and, and she great. hadn't seen some of the new plants that were out there, and so we started doing this back and forth type of, of exchange, oh. and every year there was just new varieties that were coming out, and uh, that's kind of what got me started with it. That's awesome. Now, yeah. your wife Laurel also grows violets, doesn't she? She does. Yeah. Now, do you guys uh, do you have a do you have a favorite plant? I mean, are you do you like standards? Or, I'm not, I know Laurel writes the mini she does, column yeah. for the magazine. Do yeah. you have a favorite? Um, I, I like to grow 
um, a lot of the standards mm -hmm. and I don't mind growing the minis and the semi minis because they're always a challenge but I when when we first got married um, Laura was concerned that she was going to encroach on my hobby if I wanted to do something on my own so I told her that I, I would really love for her to be involved in something cool. that I enjoyed so you know she decided yeah. to start growing I gave her a shelf <laughs> so it had three one shelf on the one, stand one shelf out okay. of all the shelves so uh, that, that was hers and she was able to she felt if I grow the minis and the semi minis I can grow more okay. of these violets and so okay. she really started to get attached to the minis and the semi minis that's great and so because she could grow a lot more of them in the small space she had um, that's that's what she ended up gravitating towards and because she's she's at home quite a bit more with the kids being so young, mm -hmm. she was able to spend a lot more time watering them. And I couldn't I couldn't be bothered with the, the, the watering schedule with a lot of minis and semi minis. So I tended to stick with the standards and some okay. of the larger plants. Well, that's interesting because you you mentioned that you thought that the minis and semis were a challenge, and I feel the same way. I feel like I'm a standard grower, and I can grow a semi. But that minis and I speak a completely different language. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you find that to be true as well? Well, I do, and I, I try a lot of experiments with the minis mm -hmm. and the semi minis mm -hmm. to, to find ways for myself to grow them mm -hmm. um, that don't require as much attention. Okay. As they would if I wasn't. So I will. I'll try to wick them. I'll try well, different. That's my next question. Is it? Okay. Yes. How do you grow your plants? Good segue. Dude, really good. Really good. <laughs> so um, most of them I grow in saucers. So they are individually watered. So do I. Yeah. Okay. And um, we our humidity is maybe fifteen percent. So we don't have a lot of humidity, and well, so they and dry out fairly quickly. It's more, more of the year where you yeah. are, isn't it? Um, where we where we live, we're maybe eight to nine months in winter. So our our home is heated and it's a forced air furnace so the okay. air is circulating throughout the house all the time and it dries the dries the air out so it dries the plants and the plants need to be watered quite a bit more regularly so I found that wicking is not as successful for me because I, the wicks dry out and I can't get that uptake of moisture as often as I need it. Okay. So I've tried a variety of different wicking techniques. Some work, some don't and mm -hmm. uh, because we grow so many plants it's hard to keep the soil mi mixes mm -hmm. separate for plants you're planning on wicking and plants mm -hmm. that you're just going to mm -hmm. grow in saucers and I've tried tray watering and things like that mm -hmm. but I find that um, plants grow best when you when you spend time with them and it's a consistency of care issue okay. so if I saucer water all of my plants I find that I'm having to look after them more regularly mm -hmm. I'm turning them mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grooming them and I'm not just filling a tray and leaving mm -hmm. right away so mm -hmm. it, it forces me to spend more time with my mm -hmm. plants and it's it's the time that causes the problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you know you've got two kids running around and you've got a lot of different activities it's um, it's hard to spend the time with the plants sure. and they sort of take sure. second, second well you s how many plants do you grow uh, on average how many plants are hanging well, around at your we house we probably got around the 300 mark and so <laughs> It sounds like a lot. It's, it sounds it's not. like a really lot. When I say 300, I, that means they're in a variety of different stages. Okay. So I've got so I've got lots of plants in leaf trays. I've got okay. some that are in, uh, you know, potted up into two and a half inch pods, waiting to to be potted on. Some that are, you know, in young stages, and some that are at older stages. Okay. Wow. So it's a variety of, of different wow. sizes. Well, that's a lot of plants. I mean, I, I, I think I have about 63 varieties right now because okay. I'm starting over. I don't know yeah. if you knew that. I had I lost all my plants earlier this I year. Did, yeah. yeah, this is that was just what prompted. A sad, sad I, know, thing. I know it made me so sad. <laughs> and I managed to bring four oh, to the show okay. today, so that was a big deal. Or this weekend. Um, so, do you feel that you have a specialty with with violets in any way? Well. Um, I've tried a lot of different things. I've, mm -hmm. uh, I've tried to isolate my environment, my growing conditions. I've mm -hmm. tried to mm -hmm. stabilize things like water. I use reverse osmosis for my water system. So okay. um, I know that my water is going to be consistent throughout the entire year. Okay. I found that in the spring when the city adds more chemicals to stabilize the mm -hmm. solids mm -hmm. that are coming mm -hmm. out of the runoff from the mountains, you know, they use aluminum sulfate and that, and that takes a lot of the minerals out. Mm -hmm. That elm that they use in the water causes all sorts of havoc with the plants. So okay. stabilizing things for me was, was 
what I've strived after for, for okay. many years. Okay. So I try to stabilize my water. I try to make sure that I use the same soil recipe all the time. Mm -hmm. I stay consistent with my fertilizer. And um, I try to do everything the same all the time. So Well, that's awesome to be that consistent and have that. That's so you can really tell if something's off, you'll be exactly. able to pinpoint it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll get more okay. of a feedback from my plants if I know that um, one is responding one way and one isn't. I'll look mm -hmm. at what's changed between the two. Okay. So if I don't find that there's any change in the consistency of what I'm doing, then I look at what kind of a variety is it. Is it maybe did I get a bad strain of a certain plant mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll look at, at the temperature, things like that. Okay. And okay. It, it just helps to identify problems. So if you were to get a pest and a plant was starting to grow mm -hmm. differently, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a little easier to identify something yeah, like that. Yeah, I would agree. So I would agree. But specialty-wise, I, I think I, I prefer um, not so many variegates. I, I prefer s standard green okay. foliage plants. I do grow variegated plants as well, okay. um, but I just find that sometimes with my fertilizing program, um, the, the solid green plants yeah, green are better, better for me. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I consider myself a standard grower too. Okay. I really like them. The, I like them the best. There's, there's nothing quite like a really stupendous looking standard. It's like, wow, this is great. Well, you know, you told us a little bit about how you started growing African violets, but I know that you're also a designer and you, mm -hmm. you have done a lot of design. Can you tell me how you got started that there, with that? What, what, what was it about design, you know, that made you say, oh, I think I want to do this? Well, um, when I first got involved with the, the Violet Society, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to become a judge. And so, as a part okay. of being a judge, you have to learn how to judge design. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had a workshop by, um, gosh, it goes back quite a few years, um, Bob Green, I can't remember where it was, maybe it was in Florida, okay. in the 80s. Uh, he did a workshop on design, and he said, if you're going to judge design, you need to know how to do design. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's, that's an excellent way mm -hmm. to get involved. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, if I can learn how to do how to put designs together, how to how to create the mechanics for you know executing certain styles mm -hmm. of design, mm -hmm. then I would better have an appreciation of the types of designs that other designers mm -hmm. were doing, mm -hmm. and it would give me a more perspective on how to judge them. So um, I was constantly looking at the designs at shows and looking at what other people had done. I had found books on design and learned all the principles and the elements of design, mm -hmm. and just experimented over you know years and years and. Um, being in a local club, we're always looking for programs and, and sure. everybody's always wanted to do design programs. So design programs became something that I was, you know, having to teach. So um, when you have to teach something, you have to learn it to know it better than, than just doing it on your own. So that sort of forces you to kind of get involved with it a lot more in, in depth. So I, I like the challenge of design. I like okay. to try to, um, you know, interpret the themes that are, sure. are being done. Sure. So it's fun. It takes cool. a lot of time and yeah. it's something that I'd like to do a lot more of because mm -hmm. when I come to conventions, I can't bring plants yeah. with me, but I can bring design materials and things in my luggage and then assemble something when yeah. I get here. So I'm looking forward to being able to do more of that That's in the future. Exciting. Well, you know, speak to us about your art and your photography and <laughs> what you do because the photos in the magazine are always just so gorgeous. I always feel like I could just reach in and pick it right up, you know, and I, I, that's what I go for before I even read the articles. I'm like, what's in here? What's the, you know, and, and they're nearly always a photo that you've taken. How did you start? What, how did that happen? Well, my, my father used to um, buy cameras a lot and he would take photos and I learned on his old equipment, whenever he'd buy a new camera, I'd, you know, be allowed to look at his old the equipment, old one. Oh, and okay, he would good. never, he would never give it to me. I was allowed to use it, so I would have to be very, very careful <laughs> with it. And I'd it have back. to demonstrate my ability to understand what it did and how to use it. And so I would, I would just practice with, you know, taking different kinds of, of photographs. And when you're shooting with film. Mm -hmm. um, it was very expensive, I know, so you I had used to be to very. I shoot a lot with film yeah, myself. Yeah. You have to be very careful with what you did, and you'd have to make sure that all of your, you know, your settings were precise, mm -hmm. and you know that you wouldn't just snap a whole bunch of shots to see what, you know, what came out of them, because uh, to to burn through a roll of thirty six shots, 
you know, was fairly expensive Back just to see day, what the result yeah. was going to be like. So uh, you had to be fairly careful with it. So I spent a lot of time, and the things that I grew a lot of were African violets. So I had a lot of subject material to, to photograph, Perfect. and I'd always get Perfect. excited about, you know, when a new violet would, would bloom. And I would, you know, get my, my dad's camera out, and I would, you know, take a, a few more shots of okay. the blossoms as they were opening, and I'd experiment on depth of field and how I could, you know, best mm -hmm. present that blossom mm -hmm. so that it was as true to life looking as, as I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of how I got started originally. And um, moving on over the years, I had, you know, started to buy my own equipment, mm -hmm. and I started to um, experiment with taking photographs at our local shows and and put putting um, albums together for our archives, and, mm -hmm. and that was kind of it was interesting. And then we would, you know, be able to take them places and show other people. And then I would start taking photographs at our local conventions mm -hmm. to, to produce our slide programs. And that way, a lot of people who couldn't travel to conventions could still benefit from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. viewing a slide program. Sure. And, and it was as though they were there. They got to see the varieties that won the categories. And, and so that, you know, spans a number of years. Sure. And, you know, now with the, the digital uh, photography world being the way it is, everybody can be a photographer and capture images. Well, not everybody can be a great <laughs> photographer, well, though. <laughs> Um, I think what what gives you the perspective is mm -hmm. I I grow the plants and I mm -hmm. know I know how to look at the plant in a way that presents uh, the plant in a way that um, it just shows that plant off. So as I, I think you have to be able to see through the viewfinder the mm -hmm. way the plant is going to look in the final mm -hmm. end, mm -hmm. as opposed to just framing a plant. In sure. A, in a sure. You know, in a picture, taking mm -hmm. a shot. So I, I think it gives um, a little bit more depth and a little bit more mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. to the pictures when when you're a lot closer and more attached to the, you know, to the to subject, the subject material sure. as well. Sure. So I I mean I I'm glad that you know my work inspires people yeah, and I, I like to share I like to share that as much as I can and uh, it gives me a lot of. Um, you know, enjoyment knowing that other people are, are able to, to enjoy what I enjoy doing as That's well. That's awesome. Well, I, I so appreciate you sitting down with me and spending a little time on the podcast. Oh, and I have welcome. one last question for you. Yeah. What advice would you give to, what, what is the best advice to give to, that you would give to a beginning grower? Well, um, I think consistency is always going to be a key issue and I find that um, if you are spending time with your violets and you're giving them the right amount of care and you're paying attention to what what's happening with them I think you have um, a better grasp of what's going on so it's it's the consistency of care I think and just try things don't be scared um, you can always exchange these with somebody else sure. if, you, if you lose if you plants. Lose something, sure. And uh, I think just experimenting and, and making it a fun um, hobby, I think, is, okay. is the best yeah. advice. Because if it's not something that you enjoy doing, it's not worth bothering with. I so agree. I, I agree. I would give it as much as much attention as you can. Great. So. Thank you again. Okay. You're very So welcome. great to My have pleasure. had you here. This is really fun. You guys, I'll be, I'll be back in a minute. Is it quiet here? Isn't he interesting? I was so glad, you know, I, I was just so glad that he had come down the, the board of the AVSA met um, at Tulsa for their fall meeting. And um, I was so glad he was there and that he consented to sit down with me. I have some tea in my holiday mug. I'm so ready. <laughs> so, well, let's take a look quickly at what's on the stands. I want you to see that um, the first plant that you're going to see is Blueberry Sprite. So remember earlier I mentioned consistency of care. You will see that, that bottom row of leaves and um, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'll see you on the other side. Hi everybody, here in the guest room taking a look. This one right in front is Blueberry Sprite. And I have to say, you know, I, was a, I didn't know if I would keep this one. But as the new growth has been coming in, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, 
you know, these older leaves that have, they're marred, they're eventually going to go um, the next time I repot. And I think that this is going to be a great plant. It sure was a prolific bloomer, so I'm excited about that. Western Moon, looking good. Pink Pussycat. And over here is Rob's Antique Rose. I really took a lot of leaves off of it. And you'll notice everyone is on reservoirs. Let's look up at the top. Aha, uh -huh. little creek girl finally coming into bloom. I think it's gonna be blooming true. It looks darker on the top. Two petals, it's kind of hard to tell on this, on the camera, but I think you'll, it's gonna be fine. And uh, there's the box of joy. You kind of see it from the side. Everybody, everybody looking great. Let's go downstairs. You guys, look, the Smithyantha's blooming. I've never seen one before. Oh, I'm so, and this one's getting ready. Just starting to bloom. Wow, this is exciting. I mean, it, it doesn't seem to be open all the way, but but boy, it looks really cool. That's exciting. I took the dome off so you could see it a little better. Over here is my little Apicia hanging out in the dome. Let's go over and look on the stand. Here are the trailers. And you guys, this looks like it's a full double blossom. I do not know what it is, but it I don't think is Cherokee Trail, but I'm, I'm going to check again. Anybody else? Looking pretty good there. Up top, everyone here on my homemade reservoirs, made from, uh, lift, you know, take out Chinese containers, Chinese food containers. They work really well. I mean, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Let me walk around and I'm show you the two dome trays. Here we go. This one, looking great. Lots of little things coming up in here. And this one just gets more like jungle land every week. I'm not going to take the whole dome off this week, but wow, look at it. It's great. Let's sip upstairs. Well, everyone here is on a reservoir as well. And these plants, I did not have an opportunity to repot them into my own mix. Oh, there's my Christmas tree. Want to see it, guys? My little, actually, this was my mom's little Christmas tree, and uh, it's just the perfect little size, and it goes really well in my sunroom, and so there it is. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I um, I put wicks into these pots using tweezers and some mason's twine, and just put them in and put these guys up on reservoirs so that they were okay for when I travel. Same thing up here, it's four little plants. Let's take a look at the big box violet. Here it is, still looking just as beautiful as ever. I haven't taken this blossom stalk off yet. I can't bring myself to do it because I'm just enjoying it so much. Having it in bloom here in the sunroom, it's just wonderful. Well, that's the look at what's on the stands. I'll see you in a moment. So did you see what I was talking about with Blueberry Sprite? Really interesting, isn't it? So you'll find this with the plants that are in your care, that sometimes they just need a little time to settle in. I've had those since, um, when was National? May? June? It was early this year. And, uh, and they're just, that one, and uh, Rob's Antique Rose, which I know it's kind of hard to tell on the, on the, the video, but I took a lot of leaves off of that this week just because I wasn't liking how they were looking. So I'm going to give it, but the center was looking good. So I'm going to give it another chance and see how it does. How cool are those blossoms on the Smithyantha? I was so excited to see those. I'm like, oh my goodness. Now I don't, they just look like little long balloons right now. I, I don't know if they're going to open up all the way or, or what they're going to do. But uh, hopefully, if they do that, they last for more than a week, so we can look at them next week and I can show them to you. So, well, it's, uh, it's time to get the bail money ready. 
Well, there's no place to get the bail money ready for, but there will be in the spring. So believe it or not, I mean, we're just headed into the holiday season here. I mean, Thanksgiving, we're just headed toward Christmas, but the spring shows are going to be here before you know it. The Illinois, the Illinois African Violet Society's show is going to be on Saturday, April 6th. Well, remember the pre-show schedule that we talked about um, in early episodes of the podcast when I was getting ready to go to show uh, in Missouri Valley? Well, I'll be having plants that are going to go back on the pre-show schedule again. That's 12 weeks out from show. So that's about three months. So I'll be looking at that and repotting and and doing all that stuff in December when I am back for my little holiday. And uh, things will get on the schedule in January to be ready for April. So think about that. Is there a show you might want to enter in the spring? Is something coming up? Something new? Have you ever entered a show? If not, and there is a show, uh, you know, you, you belong to a club or there's an affiliate close to you that you've been thinking of joining, now might be a good time because every time i'm every time that i have ever taken a plant to show i learn something it makes me a better grower every time i go so i can't encourage you to any more than that i mean it is i really strongly encourage you to consider even if you just enter one plant in the show what have you got to lose nothing and you'll learn something Well, and now it's time to keep moving forward. Again, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And as we head into Christmas, I hope that your days will be filled with all the things you love. Good growing. I'll see you next time.